Why, hello there YouTube and welcome to a Who review. I am Davros and I'm a Whovian and today I review Doctor Who Sharda. <laughs> So, Sharda, where do I begin? Well, this has probably gone down in the show's history as one of the most infamous stories, as it was never completed, and it never aired. But, over time, in the late in the 90s, it was released on video with narration from Tom Baker, and then adapted again in uh, you know, Big Fish Audio with Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor, until it was you know, redone again in 2017, is it? Where it was released on DVD, where all the bits that were never filmed were put back in there with animation. So, this uh, follows the Doctor and Romana that go to Cambridge in 1979, where there is this uh, criminal named Skagra who is collecting people's minds in a sphere orb, and the Doctor also goes to one of his old friends, Professor Crinotus, who is a Time Lord at the end of all his lives, and his room basically turns out to be none other than a TARDIS disguised, and um, they you know, find that Skagra is trying to collect all these minds so he can find a way to release this Time Lord criminal named Sally Avon on Sharda, which is a prison planet place for the Time Lords. So that's the essential story there. So what did I like about this one? Well, I'm purely going to review the um, DVD re-release where it's all put back in with animation. So what did I like about this one? Well, first of all, with the footage that was filmed was great. I like the footage there, what they were filming. Of course, with this story being unaired, they kind of reused some of the footage for the Five Doctors when Tom Baker didn't come back for that 20th anniversary special. So I recognise some scenes here and there where they showed the footage and that. But to finally see it all full together, it makes sense. Ah, that's what it was doing. So I liked that, that we got to see you, know, Tom Baker and Lala Ward deliver some good performing there. Even though at that time I think they were they married or were they divorced? I know that they had a messy divorce, but uh, still they 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 stayed professional on camera and just played their parts great. And also I like the secondary characters we got like Chris and Claire, which were like students, and we got Professor Cronotus again, who was a, a very you know, strange, peculiar character. And in the end, he turns out to be the very Time Lord Crinable they're looking for, that Skagra's looking for, Sally Avon, only he's now Professor Crinotus. Um, I also liked the animation they added in there, you know, because in the past, they've got like lost episodes or lost serials of Patrick Troughton and William Hartnell's Doctors, and they've, um, you know, reanimated those episodes. But in this one, they. The bits that were never filmed because of the writer's strike at the BBC at that time, they were unable to access the studio to film those certain scenes. So that's why the story was an ad. I believe it was meant to be a six-part story. But, um, yeah, on the DVD I watched this and it was all one full feature length feature. But I like the animation. I like that they actually used the animation to fill in bits that were never, you know, Finished. They even got the cast, you know, the remaining cast back to record their lines and do it as well, which I thought was great. And at the very end, in the final scene when the Doctor and Romana are in the TARDIS, they didn't reanimate that, but they did refilm it with Tom Baker. Even though Tom Baker now is old and you know doesn't look like he did back then when he was the Doctor. They, he actually came back and did a full on screen cameo playing his doctor as if he was like breaking the fourth wall at the end delivering his final line and letting us know we finished it. I like that ending, I don't know why, it's bonkers why the doctor's rapidly aged all of a sudden but I, I didn't care, I just really like that they actually did one 
bit where they actually refilmed it with Tom Baker. I mean, Lola Ward wasn't present, but uh, still, that w that was a nice ending, a nice touch to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the story as well. Uh, I watched it, like I said, it was one full length uh, on the DVD. I don't know if the DVD had the bit where you can watch them in set episodes, but at the end of the day, I like this series. It's a shame it never got finished and it never aired because I saw potential in this. I've also got the VHS version of this one as well where Tom Baker comes in and fills in the bits that were never filmed during that VHS release. And I have listened to the Paul McGann Big Finish Audio one as well. Uh, but I like this one as... I mean, this is probably the closest we'll get to it being finished. And like I say, it never aired, so it didn't air in 1979. But I could see what could have been. You know, the serial that could have been. And yeah, but I, I'm glad they actually you know, decided to commit finishing this one. And, you know, at least doing this for us fans. Uh, so, like I say, I truly, you know, appreciate that they did that and you know it was just nice to see it all finish the best they, that they could even though it's with animation I think it's perfect you know I mean I don't mind the animation I mean yeah it's strange how it goes from live action to animation but at the end of the day I don't care I enjoyed this one I enjoyed watching it there were some errors though there were moments where it was a bit slow moments where I thought it was a bit snooze festy and that you know but I soldiered on and I kept on watching and I'm glad I did so it's a good serial and as I said already sad that they never got to finish it but it's finished now to me it's finished and you know even though it's its own story and it's probably not canon I consider it canon so yeah anyway enough chin wagging let's get on with the ratings the performances, I will give them a 10 because, you know, they did extra credit there for the voices and stuff. The writing, you know, from Douglas Adams, one of the great, one of the best science fiction writers, you know, of his day. And he has wrote for Doctor Who many times before. And a shame he never got to see his work. The writing, I will give that uh, an, an 8. The visuals, an 8. And my personal, I'll give it a 9. So, there you go. There are my ratings for Doctor Who. Sharda, so have you seen this one? Have you listened to it with Paul McGann? Let me know all that down below in the comments. I believe you can actually watch it on BritBox if you've got BritBox. It's a UK streaming service where you can watch you know, shows from the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5 and it's really great. You can watch classic Doctor Who on there. I don't know if it's available worldwide but it's definitely available nationwide. But yeah, anyway, yeah, that's it for this Who Review. So, yeah, until next time, run for your life.